Greetings, this is William Jackson, and I want to welcome you to this session at Word Camp Santa Clarita. I am in Jacksonville, Florida, and this shows the dynamic ability to connect people with the use of technology. At this session, I am going to talk about HBCUs, which are historically black colleges and universities, that can help build their PLCs and PLNs. And PLCs are professional learning communities and PLNs are professional learning networks. Now there's a difference between the two. A professional learning community is more casual and social. Those are the people around you that may inspire you, they may encourage you, they may build you up, they may lift you up in your desire for your career aspirations and to be involved and engaged in your community as being a mentor or community activist. Your PLN is more professional. Professional Learning Network is where professionally you connect with others and you create a network that supports and helps each other in your career aspirations. So we know in many businesses and organizations it takes a network and it takes a community and it takes a group of people that have similar passions but different expertise in different areas to be able to build a company or to move a company forward in this digital age. Inclusivity and diversity is very important. So companies and organizations locally, nationally, and globally are finding that it's very important to be inclusive in their design to promote, enhance, and put people of diversity in positions of leadership. Now, my goal in the time that I have is to share how HBCUs can support their students and faculty in building their professional learning communities and professional learning networks to success through WordPress and WordCamp. So as I start at this time, it is our summertime that is going on right now. And the summertime, you know, a lot of people are like, let the good times roll and happy that they're out of school and they're doing things that they want to do with their families. There's no classes. There's no learning, just chilling and reacting. But I want to say, wait, learning does not stop, nor does it take a break or a vacation. Now, this is kind of like a story, so it's not really like a traditional presentation. But my grandmother, Mary Snow, she had an eighth grade education. She and my mother, Rebecca Jackson, my mom was a graduate of Delaware State College, which is also an HBCU, but now it's Delaware State University. Uh, she earned her bachelor's degree there and continued on to earn her master's degree at Rutgers University. Now, she taught myself, my brother and my sister, that the same people you will be competing against are not the are the same people that are not taking a summer break. They're reading books. They're reading magazines. They're reading articles. They're listening to podcasts and networking their butts off because they know that one day they will be they will be competing against you and others. My mom and grandmother understood that each year you have to keep your skills up. You have to do research in your skill choices to see what is changing in the next 5, 10, or 15 years or beyond. My mother taught business skills, starting with shorthand, which I knew how to do back in the day. I knew how to take shorthand. She then transitioned to manual typewriters, then to the IBM electric typewriters. And then at that time, they were the favorite IBM computers because they were electric. Next, they transitioned to IBM computers, which contained the Windows operating system and the rudimentary Microsoft Office. She was preparing at that time mostly girls to get jobs to support themselves and preparing them for future office positions um, that may earn them to write to uh, have jobs after high school because they knew shorthand and typing at that time. And those were the skills that were necessary. I have seen the development of technology, and I'm proud to say, through the eyes of a black woman like my mom. Um, she worked hard to develop, to help young people develop the skills necessary to be successful, to be employed. Um, I've seen 
my mom worked diligently in her planning to help young people be successful. But like any mom, she took her kids with her. So me, my brother, my sister, during the summers, were cleaning her classroom, cleaning her equipment, organizing her books. And we were also, at the time we didn't know, attending her meetings, which was a benefit with the knowledge that was shared. My grandmother, on the other hand, was a domestic worker. She was a laborer. So during the week, she lived and worked with a Jewish family that lived in a high-rise apartment that the husband was an attorney, the wife would stay at home, and their children were at home as well. My grandmother worked several years for them. She cooked for them, she cleaned for them, and only the Lord knows what else she did to help them. Then on the weekend, she came home to be with us. Why is this important? Because in, at an early age, I understood the sacrifices that parents make for their children and the sacrifices that they continue to make even today. That's why education is more important today than ever, ever, than ever before. I learned that this was the life years ago of thousands of black, brown, and indigenous women that wanted to support their children. Some had it harder than my grandmother, but they had their families to support and they did survive. This enabled my grandmother to send my mother to Delaware State College and to send her other daughter, my aunt Jackie, to Cosmopolitan School so she could have a good career and a good life and start a family of her own. Little did we know, my mother and grandmother were preparing myself, my sister, and my brother for a future, a future that had involved technology. A life where technology would change lives of everyone. I did not realize this at the time, being a typical high school student. I was running around with my friends, running track, doing the things that a typical high school person did. But it sparked a respect for learning and a desire to be productive that my mother was a visionary for the future. It taught me also to shut my mouth when my mother and grandmother spoke to me and they were teaching me. They were teaching us about life. Even though I was struggling as a black youth in Philadelphia trying to find myself, what were my talents? What were my skills? What were my abilities um, outside of running track and having fun with my, my friends? This was in Camden, New Jersey during the early 80s as we were living in Philly and going back and forth to Camden where my mother worked and I attended school. My mother was a business teacher as long as I can remember at Camden High School until her passing in 2004. That was the same year I graduated with my master's in educational technology from Webster University. The same year I was hired as an adjunct professor with the oldest historically black college and university in Florida that was Everett Waters College in Jacksonville, Florida. So I had moved from Philadelphia, received a track scholarship to run track at South Carolina State University, and from after finishing my degree, moved down here to Florida. It was a wonderful experience, but in that transition, I learned and continued to learn the value of education, the value of implementing technology and keeping up with technology as it changed. I taught educational technology, social media, social media and STEAM from 2004 to 2017, where I taught students how to use technology, low level and higher level, how to attend technology conference. When I say how to attend technology conference, I mean how to attend and behave yourself, to listen, to follow directions, engage with people and ask questions. I taught students social media skills blogging on the WordPress platform, YouTube, how to effectively use it, and why HBCU students should attend technology conferences like WordCamps locally, nationally, and if possible, globally. Teaching students why they should blog, why they should video blog, why they should micro blog with Twitter, using Instagram to build their brands and to market themselves to the world. Today, we have other platforms. We have TikTok. We have Clubhouse. We have platforms that are being developed and have been developed for social exchanges and social awareness 
but also these platforms can help HBCU students build their brand, build their confidence, build their self-awareness of the world, and build their ability to communicate effectively in the world. Uh, teaching what a PLC is, a professional learning community, what a PLC and a PL PLN enable students to do um, is to integrate HBCU students into a world that is professional and technically advanced beyond what they might have at their colleges and universities. HBCU students need to learn how to network and even embrace the term code switching to speak in their career language, but at the end of the day, speak their home language with their family and friends. There is still so much to learn and so little time to prepare students that it seems that time is flying by, but the four years or five years that students choose to attend a college or university is very important and very valuable. I am not saying do not enjoy your experience. I'm not saying do not enjoy relationships. I am not saying do not enjoy the, the, the dynamics of the social life of HBCUs. What I am encouraging as an HBCU graduate and as a professional educator and a professor is to be aware of the importance and value of building a professional learning community and a professional learning network. I used to wonder um, as I was growing up why children of color and culture would act a certain way in school when they were prompted to practice reading. I used to wonder why it was so difficult a challenge to practice speaking. Um, why myself and my friends were scared to attend the technology conferences that were available and learn about new technologies. It was important for us to meet business owners and even entrepreneurs. My mother shared that it is valuable experience because you never know who you're going to meet. You never know who you're going, who's going to bless you with a possible scholarship. You never know who potentially is going to bless you with a possible future career opportunity. Um, internships, um, whether they're paid or, in, or not paid, are very valuable and very important. Uh, too many students as I was going to high school and transitioned to college in my classes had this strange idea that their boys or their girls or that are their sores or frats would just hook them up with jobs. And I would ultimately share um, from what I learned from my mother and grandmother that the idea of jobs means just over broke and to focus not on just obtaining a job, but obtaining a career. In order to obtain a, a, a career that's beneficial, it is important to build your professional learning community and your professional learning network. My kids, Sean and Shay, they loved conferences. They loved to see new things and be exposed to black, brown, white, Asian, other cultures that they can talk to and share ideas. I mention this sometimes to my classes um, that I teach at attending HBCUs, and often I get pushed back because there was a different mindset, there was a different frame of reference to why I was taking my children to technology conferences. Now, needless to say, teaching at an HBCU, there is a particular mindset, but sometimes mindsets hold you back. Your professional learning network should be representative of the culture beyond where you're going to school. It should not be a problem to have someone that is white, someone that is Asian, someone that is Hispanic, someone that is Haitian, someone that is uh, Mexican, someone that is Jamaican, someone that is another culture and another background than you, because that builds your ability to connect with people of different cultures so you can embrace the global concept of a global partnership and a global economy. We are in a digital world and raising children is important that they are exposed to all kinds of people so they get an understanding that it is a global society and that ideas of nationalization or individuality will not be successful or cannot survive in a global economy. 
many of our beautiful black, brown, and indigenous youth teens and young, adult, young adults unfortunately are scared to branch out beyond their personal knowledge. But they should know that they have personal strength. They should have, they have personal power of embracing their color and their culture but including others of diversity into their personal networks. Technology can empower, influence, inspire, and educate them and others around them. To compete in this world, you need a firm, strong technology foundation. Being athletic and in entertainment will only go so far, and I can tell you that money does not last a lifetime. Your career aspirations can help prepare you, propel you into other areas of life that are beneficial, not just for you, but your growing and building family. Each summer, I attend conferences related uh, to word camps. From 2010 to the present, which is now 2021, there are ed camps, bar camps, Florida blogging and technology conferences, and other conferences that are ongoing here in Florida. Attending free technology workshops at the University of Florida, University of Central Florida, and University of South Florida. That's what I used to do. And as my confidence grew, I often spoke at conferences, workshops, and seminars here in Jacksonville, Orlando, Tampa, Miami, and other places. Sometimes being the only black male there or the person of color at all. And the reason I share this with my HBCU, HBCU peers is get out of your shell, get out of your comfort zone and apply first to attend a technology conference like WordCamps and also apply to speak because you have knowledge that others do not have. You have a sense of place. You have a sense of power. You have a sense of culture that can be integrated with technology to share your awareness, your skills, and your talents with others. The beauty of the WordCamp community is that it is embracive of everyone, regardless of gender, regardless of color, regardless of background. Attending these wonderful events allowed me also to take youth, teens, and young adults that I taught at elementary schools that I taught at and who were not scared, like my kids, to go out and attend these conferences. Uh, when I spoke at conferences, I would take them and I would also put them to work and ask them to help me and assign them jobs. I've been blessed with the opportunities on several occasions when I was a professor at Everett Waters College to take students with me to uh, conferences where they can see a different perspective of the world, where they could talk with other people that were business owners and entrepreneurs, where they could take those those things that 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 would that were taught in the classroom outside the classroom and apply them in wor real world situations. Uh, black, brown, and indigenous youth, teens, and young adults may not be taught these elements in the classroom, whether in high schools or middle schools or colleges, but they must know that they are intelligent enough and worthy enough to be a part of a global community of technology. For me, I wanted to make sure I did for their benefit and their future's benefit the same that my mother and grandmother did for me. Now, there may be some pushback. There may be some people that don't agree, but you have to look at the world in a global perspective. You have to look at the world through the eyes of people of color that wish they could be a part of the activities and the events that you are experiencing in your life. It seems that every day the reality of life comes bearing down on us. But just imagine as you're going through your articulation through school, how your life could potentially be with no degree or a partial degree. That how your life could change if you did not have the skills that you have now to be able to attain a position or a career, career in technology. When we're coming closer to the present, I'm still attending WordCamp conferences and I'm still talking to students. I'm still sharing my experiences as I'm doing here at WordCamp Santa Clarita. Um, I'm joined by my wife, Aida, who is also a speaker. 
Not only is she a speaker, but she's a volunteer and organizer as myself. My wife, Aida Correa Jackson, is also Afro-Latina. So as we grow in the WordCamp and WordPress community, our tribe that we develop, that we grow, that we're a part of, helps to keep us, and we laugh about this several times, it helps keep us useful and active because there's always something to learn. The people that we are engaged with, they are black, white, brown, indigenous, youth, teens, young adults, adults, um, that we help and work with to inspire them, to encourage them, to excite them about the possibilities and opportunities that technology presents. We talk on a level of not just what technology is, but how we can integrate technology to improve each and each each of our lives. Um, we um, share that we are blurred or Afro nerds or techno Hispanics, and we live in a digital world where there are digital Caribbean Caribbeans. Um, each of us has the potential to change the world. Now, if you never heard of what a blurred is, a blurred is a black nerd. And if you never heard of the terms that I just mentioned, they are just terms like techno Hispanics that are lovingly embracing the idea that it's okay to be a geek. It's okay to be a nerd. It's okay to, in, to be involved in technology. Because if you have not noticed that nerds and geeks and blurreds run the world, okay? Uh, so we should understand when we go to technology conference, they should see the beauty of black, brown, and indigenous faces and the different shades that represent the world. As I said, my wife is Afro-Latina and she speaks English and Spanish. So when we go off to Costa Rica or we go to different places to travel, she interprets for me because I have no Spanish literacy besides hola and como esta. Now I'm still learning, but the beauty to that is uh, my beautiful Afro-Latina wife, she was influenced by her mother as well. Her mother was Norma Andino Cruz, and she was the first, if not one of the first, uh, Afro-Latinas to have a computer business here in Jacksonville, Florida. She built computers, she serviced them, and was influential in the Jacksonville com community. And she taught her daughters and son similar values related to technology. Now with this developing, developing pandemic, it has made changes in education that will be seen for years to come. Black, brown, and indigenous youth, teens, and young adults, they should take advantage now of being able to access learning digitally. They should take, a, take advantage of being able to access Google and YouTube and all the resources available. There really is no time to rest or just taking a break because you're tired. There's no time to just say, forget it, um, I'll do it later. I'll do it another day. Because my grandmother, she used to tell us a true fact. She would say, Derek, my middle name is Derek. You have to remember that those people that are sitting around resting, unfortunately, like a lot of people of color and culture, during the summer, kids attending HBCUs like my mother attended and like my father attended, need to make sure that they get their hustle on every day. They should be studying. They should be going to museums. They should be going to libraries and other things to learn to get ahead. One of the worst things that can happen to a youth, teen, and young adult of color is just doing nothing. And that's what will hurt them. We have to understand that as HBCU students and graduates and faculty and administrators, the world is in continuous environmental and digital flux, change, and adaption. Even in areas, there is an evolution and a revolution in different social engagements that are going on around the world. We must continue to learn how to apply technology to improve the social conditions of the world. This benefits everyone, not just one group of people. HBCU universities and colleges used to close during the summer, but 
for several years now, they remain open because they understand the value of summer learning. And because of the virtual learning possibilities, accessing digital information and digital applications helps to increase the learning process. You know, the interesting thing that this was foretold years ago, and I am a sci-fi geek, and I always loved sci-fi because of my mother um, sitting down with us when we were younger watching Star Trek or Deep Space Nine or older movies called Space 1999. And there was evidence of the growth of technology and what was coming in the future. The future is now. The future is here. Technology, even in the movies that we watched recently, The Terminator, how many times did Arnold say he will be back? So I equate that to technology already giving us a warning that technology will continue to grow and expand. Just looking at the movies of Star Wars, just looking at the new movies of Star Trek, just looking at the new sci-fi movies that are out there that are directed to space, the technology that is integrated into those movies, many are already in existence. The unfortunate thing about that is sometimes our black and brown and communities are not enabled to engage and participate in these areas of technological achievements. Look at the growth of SpaceX, which is developing into a commercial organization to send people in space, not just to send them in space, but to continue to explore the moon and Mars. The collaboration between SpaceX and NASA has developed to a point where HBCU students have new opportunities to expand their personal learning communities and expand their personal learning networks, being involved in WordPress and WordCamp. Because you are developing skills, you have access to people of knowledge and influence and abilities to motivate and encourage and inspire you to grow even further and move even faster in areas of technology. I like to say, wake up my brothers and sisters. The signs are there. You must see what's going on around you. My mother and grandmother, even from the past, saw them, and I bet yours did too. You may have been like me. You may not just have been listening to them. So as a past instructor at an HBCU, and as a past instructor with NASA, I would tell my students and other faculty that online learning like this was coming. It was coming faster than we understood. We just didn't know the situations and circumstances that would happen that would make it come to fruition the way it is now. If we watch television and we watch sci-fi movies, it was interesting the development of technology and what we have now that we take advantage of and that we just are mindless to the fact of how it works. It just works. Knowing the change is coming has inspired Aida and I to conduct here in Jacksonville free technology workshops for youth, teens, and young adults at our local libraries, to have partnerships with Microsoft, to be involved and engaged in voice platforms like Clubhouse to participate in online conversations with youth, teens, and young adults. And we continuously invite HBCU students and faculty to converse with us, to talk with us, and be prepared for the future. Developing partnerships with Microsoft, holding community workshops, developing partnerships with Apple, and globally with others in the world is a key ingredient as an HBCU graduate because those resources I can share with other HBCU institutions. I would invite HBCU schools to connect with me, to talk with me about how they can integrate, participate, and be involved in the WordPress and WordCamp community. The beauty of it is, is the people that are involved that promote education, that promote learning, or not just a local scale, not just a national scale, but an international scale. From 1995 to 2020, I have attended and spoken at many conferences and was, as I said before, the only person of color, male or female, that attended and spoke at them. I have attended the Florida Educational Technology Conference, bar camps, Florida Blogging Technology Conference, Ed camps, 
Preventing Crime in the Black Community, Keystone Leadership Conference for Boys and Girls Clubs, Save Our Sons, Man Up for Health Conferences, and Teaching with NASA and our historic Edward Waters College. It is important that activities and events that are ongoing that HBCU students, when possible and if possible, should attend. There are many opportunities to sponsor HBCU students to attend, but with the the pandemic going on as it is now, globally, the conferences and the events and the actual meetups that are held each month are free. I encourage you to research in your area where a WordPress meetup is, where a WordCamp conference is going to att- going to um, going to be held. Uh, WordCamp conferences also embrace kids camps, and these are also virtual as well. Young people today are adapting to digital tools like Zoom, Skype, GoToMeeting, and others. But Facebook Live, Instagram Live, and adaption of phone for online collaboration is sharing like platforms like Clubhouse. These are the adjustments society has to make to teach ourselves in many cases. But people of color do technology and do good with technology. As I said before, There are blurs, geeks, nerds, out-of-the-box thinkers, digital innovators, digital entrepreneurs, and now there are young people as young as 13, 14, and 15 that are attending colleges and universities. Knowledge is power, but applying that knowledge is more powerful. We must continue to grow in our knowledge of our geekiness and our nerdiness and our digital innovation. As a graduate of South Carolina State University, I was taught that we should embrace all levels of new learning, new engagement, new partnerships, and new collaboration. As an educator, I learned professional learning communities and professional learning networks can open doors that were closed. They can smash the the glass ceilings that we perceive to be above us. As a teacher of 32 years teaching in elementary education, I have always told my students that there's nothing wrong with being a nerd. There's nothing wrong with being a blurred. There's nothing wrong with being a geek of this world because they are the ones that will communicate, collaborate, and access the much needed information to grow. HBCU students must understand that they will be the innovators. They will be the future millionaires and billionaires of the future. We must give acclaim to those that we are able to stand on their shoulders and rise. I always thank my sister, my sister from another mother, Tiffany Duhart, and my brother from another mother, Lee Brown here in Jacksonville, and others that showed me new ways about technology as well. We must continue to build our networks in our community so that when something new comes along, we can share it with each other and not just try to hoard it for ourselves. There are new adventures and new ways people can better better themselves, be smarter and stronger within their communities to build their communities. It is a wonderful opportunity here to speak at Word Camp Santa Clarita, where my wife and I We can talk and be advocates of STEM, STEAM, and stream learning. We are encouraging HBCU students and faculty as well to embrace the digital spaces around them. All aspects of society can be embracive and inclusive using technology as we build a global community where skills, skills, talents, and abilities are needed. We must adapt to the ability to integrate technology. We must adapt to the ability of inspiring others to learn. We cannot afford to be exclusive. We must be inclusive in our societies. Distance learning, as we have learned, can be successful if there's an equal distribution of resources, tools, platforms, and apps that allow the learning to continue. The teaching of instructional personnel and passionate people Let's see if past television programs and movies can continue to lift communities up, continue to empower youth, teens, and young adults and young people. Many times we were told that HBCUs were the foundation of many communities. 
Many times we were taught that HBCUs, because of their existence, lifted people out of poverty, lifted them out of socioeconomic challenges. Were there communities that can be inclusive in the HBCU communities that will help integrate, implement, teach, and grow intelligent, inspiring, and impactful people in the community? This is William Jackson. I hope my session has inspired you and encouraged you to get involved in communities like the WordPress and WordCamp community to build and grow your digital skills, your digital talents, your digital uniqueness, and your authentic use of technology to grow into a business owner or entrepreneur. I am happy to wear my t-shirt, South Carolina State University, but also I am happy to come before you as a graduate of an HBCU to talk to HBCU students, faculty, and even administrators to encourage you that the wonderful community of WordPress and WordCamp is here for you. Take advantage of it. Thank you.